Hey, it's Corpsey. I'm here with the uh, very famous and uh, wonderfully nice guy, Danny Trejo. We're shooting for Girls and Corpses magazine. And I was just asking Danny, I heard a story about how he got started in the movies. And um, it was on the film Runaway Train. How, how did that happen? How did you wind up on set? Well, I was a drug counselor and uh, I, uh, I heard, uh, I, I, I was a drug counselor and this kid called me uh, that was trying to stay clean. Yeah. And he uh, asked uh, if I could come down and support him because there was a lot of drugs on the set in 1985, you know, cocaine yeah, yeah. was rampant. So uh, I just went down to support him, you know, that's what I do. I'm a drug counselor, still a drug counselor, still work for Western Pacific Medcorp, you know. And so uh, I went down to support him. I, I walked on his movie set and I thought it was the cutest thing I'd ever seen because all these guys were acting like convicts. You know, hey, mother. <laughs> it was like funny. Does this look tough? I go, yeah, you'd be somebody's wife in prison. Keep it up. <laughs> and so this guy asked me, hey, do you want to be in this movie? And I says, uh, what do I got to do? And he says, do you want to be an extra? I said, an extra what? You know, I've never been on a movie in my life. He said, oh, can you act like a convict? <laughs> been in every prison in the state of California, right? I said, oh, I'll give it a shot. You know, so. I took off my shirt and he saw that big tattoo. This guy comes running over and says, hey, you're Danny Trejo. I go, yeah. He says, Danny, I saw you win the lightweight and the welterweight title up in San Quentin. And uh, I says, yeah, you're Eddie Bunker. It's a friend of mine. This guy, me and the guy were in a joint together. And he says, are you still boxing? I said, well, I train. You know, he says, uh, we need somebody to train one of the actors how to box. And I asked him, what's it pay? Because they were going to give me 50 bucks for acting like a convict. And he says, 3.20 a day. And I said, how bad you want this guy beat up, Eddie? You know, I, thought, I thought it was a hit. You know, I, thought, I thought he was mad at somebody. I'd have done it for another 50 bucks. And he said, no, no, you got to be careful. This actor's really high strung. He might sock you, Danny. I said, Eddie, for 320 bucks, give him a stick. Man, are you crazy? I've been hit, beat up for free. So I started training Eric Roberts how to box for the movie Runaway Train. And Eric respected me and he wanted to learn how to fight so he did whatever I told him to do. Andre Kozlowski, the director, who had had a lot of problems on the set with different movie stars, saw that Eric would do what I asked him to do so he came over and asked me to be in a movie. He says, you be in movie. You fight Eric in movie. And everybody screamed, he's not sag, he's not sag. He said, make him sag. And and then he looked at me and says, you be in movie, you fight Eric, you be my friend. He was a Russian aristocrat, right? <laughs> you be my friend. And then he leans over and he kisses me on one cheek, kisses me on the other cheek and walks away. You know? I told Eddie, look, Eddie, I'm going to train the kid for 320, but if I'm going to be kissing that old man, I want more money. <laughs> and he said, no, no, he's a Russian aristocrat. So me and Andre became very, very, very good friends. And Eric, we finished that movie, Runaway Train. That's how I got started. From there, I just kept on. I, I played inmate number one in about 300 movies. You know, uh, from, from 1985 to 1991, they made a whole bunch of gangbanger movies, uh, uh, prison movies, and I was in all of them. You know, and then the first speaking role I had was a, a movie with uh, Charles Bronson called Death Wish 4, and I played yeah. Art Sinella, so that was it, yeah. When it, what, uh, Machete happened, uh, because did you know Robert Rodriguez? Was it written for Me you? and Robert Rodriguez are second cousins. We found that out on the set of Desperado. My family came down to visit me, and they said, hey, that's our cousin. And so that's how I found out Robert was my cousin. But we started talking about Machete then. He liked my character. He liked the way I looked. Which was a yeah. short, by the way, which was a short part of Grindhouse. Well, it's actually, Robert said, let's do this trailer. Even if we don't do Machete, we'll at least have a, a, a spot for it. So we did the trailer, and then everybody loved it. Hey, Frog! <laughs> Yeah. Get my shirt, Holmes. Oh, That's why nobody likes you, Holmes. <laughs> uh, yeah, now my shirt's all dirty. No. We're, we're doing a tight shot anyhow. You know, we're, we're like up in here. No, no I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll put it under the wall. Okay. Um, so, um, Girls and Corpses magazine, this is our biker issue. Uh, you own a couple bikes, Absolutely. right? Yeah, I own, that one's mine. And uh, 
The other one, the yellow one's Max. Me and uh, a guy named uh, uh, Chubby, who's one of my mechanics and best friends, and uh, and uh, Roo 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 Dog, another kid, and, and uh, we actually built it at, at Chubby's uh, uh, Chubby's uh, shop right there on on, on Polk and San Fernando Road. And uh, the yellow one is is uh, Max's, my assistant. And and the funny thing is, uh, the Elvis Presley's people were doing a uh, photo shoot with Elvis's glasses. They actually want celebrities wearing Elvis's glasses, oh, right? So his original glasses, right? And so, so uh, they brought him over in this beautiful case, and and uh, they wanted pictures of my bike. And so uh, I, uh, I I showed them my bike, and they looked at Max. Max is that brilliant brilliant color right and mine's yeah. dark you know so they go, oh no Elvis would have loved this bike Max has never let me forget it <laughs> yeah they want to take a picture on my bike you know, so. now you somehow avoided uh, being in actual motorcycle gangs I mean you said you were in regular gangs though, right? Yeah, well you know uh, gangs Mexicans gangs are usually neighborhoods mm -hmm. you know it's like your neighborhood gangs you know so you can all you almost can't avoid that and then, but afterwards, you know, I mean, come on, you get 25, 30 years old. It's like you're a little old to be in a motorcycle gang, you know. <laughs> so I don't really, I don't really approve or disapprove, you know, but I, I don't ride with any, any. You know, I, I remember you were really wonderful. You went to Covenant House. These are kids off the street, a lot of gang guys. And I remember to this day what you told them. It was so powerful. You said, what three words will get you killed more than any words? And it's so funny. And it's tell so them what you said. You ask that question, none of them know. I've asked that, uh -huh. and I go, let me tell you, you use these words all the time, and you don't even know what you're doing. Sometimes you're signing a death sentence. And you go, what are you, you, where are you from? And it gets quiet because they understand that those three words can get you killed. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk, the, the, the thing about talking to kids, the, 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 the difference, anybody can deliver my message, anybody. The message is drugs and alcohol will ruin your life. Education is the key to anything you want to do. That's the message. Anybody can deliver it. Problem is first you have to get kids' attention. They don't have any. They don't have no attention. Three, two, you have to keep their attention, which is revert to number one. They don't have any, right? And then number three is you have to show them that you're cool. And if you're 10 years older than them, you're not cool. So the blessing that's been bestowed upon me is that when I walk onto a campus, I've got their attention. Automatic, not Danny Trejo, but the guy from Spy Kids, the yes. guy from Heat, mm -hmm. the guy from Desperado, the guy from Blood In, Blood Out. All them little Mexicans, oh, that's that dude from Blood Oh, man, I want to hear. They want to hear what I got to say. So they get the message. I mean, I've had kids come up years later and say, hey, I heard you talk in juvenile hall, man. Mm -hmm. When I was 16, man, I'm 25. I ain't been in trouble, blah, blah. And what a bless, what an unbelievable blessing. Well, you're a good guy to do that. It, it really was wonderful with those kids. Danny, come here for a second. What's up, Dan? Get over here. Come, come here. Let's get a beautiful girl in the shot. Come Let's get a girl in the shot. There's too much testosterone. Let me introduce to all of you the wonderful, beautiful uh, Danny Devine, who traveled all the way from England. Squat down a little bit here so we can. She's my girlfriend from London. <laughs> I love London. We're going to go visit the Queen. Yeah. I, have a love, I have a funny story. See with the Queen. Mother. She really wanted to meet you awesome. she's a big you're fan gorgeous. You're beautiful. and she's uh i thought she was saying she kept saying she does fi what is fi i thought it was an english thing fire she does fire yeah. stuff fire. awesome it's tell fire. them what you do um i'm a fi performer so i breathe and eat fire for a living yeah how's that do you can you eat fire danny uh no i, I once had a girl it's asked me have you ever thought about how it would feel to be burned to death? I slept on the couch. <laughs> I hope you don't see her anymore. 
Um, so you're getting to work with Danny. What's it like being uh, dead with a beautiful girl? Yeah, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> Is this the easiest job? Just lay still there, Dan. Okay. <laughs> now, you had, we had met before. Had you heard of Girls and Corpses? Is it your dream to be in Girls and Corpses? Absolutely. Are you kidding? It's like Rob Zombie and and uh, uh, all my all my favorites, you know, Sid, uh, Hague. Sid Haig and uh, Mosley and... Uh, Quentin, yeah. you know, these are the fans of uh, Girls and Corpses. <laughs> Quick uh, plug. They're doing a machete for, can we say that? That we know that? Three. We're three. Oh, I yeah, thought we Robert's, did. Robert's getting ready to put together a machete three. Machete kills in space. He's not sure how he wants to do it, but. That's really the time. Awesome. In space. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Danny should be in it. Anything you want to ask Danny Trejo? I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> you really are. Um... What's your favorite Danny Trejo movie? Gotta be Machete, come on. Machete. What's your favorite scene in the movie? Everything. I would I would have loved Machete even if I wasn't in it. <laughs> I, my favorite scene is when you, you open the guy up and then swing down on his oh, intestines. Yes, yes. Yeah, that was amazing. I remember when when uh, uh, Robert showed me that. Like, what? <laughs> That's a first? You're okay, so that was cool. Um, so you, do you see any of his other movies? I mean, Danny's in, you know, like every other film these days, it seems. I really liked you in Sons of Anarchy. Oh, yeah, that was great. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, that bike, the yellow bike, that was used in, in uh, Sons of Anarchy. And my assistant, Max, he's, he's in it. He's in Sons of Anarchy. And now they're getting ready to do a spinoff with the Mayans. Oh, really? And, yeah, and he's going to be in that, so that's kind of cool. Um, what is your best memories of Son of Anarchy? What was the experience like? Meeting the guys. You know what? You want me to tell you one of the nicest guys in the world is uh, Charlie. Yeah. He's from London, or he's from England, but he's the yeah, nicest he guy in the world, man. And he was just he's an unbelievably warm person, mm -hmm. you know. And usually when you become a star that quick, Hollywood has a way of seducing you into being an ass. You know what I mean? He just has a way of doing it. And he just shot to the top. And yet he is so, just such a nice guy, man. He talks about his dad, talks about his family. It was just, I, I really, I really, I really uh, had a lot of hope for the young people in, in God, I sound like an old guy. I really had a lot of hope for the young people in Hollywood if they're like him, you know, because he was just a nice guy. Him and, and, uh, uh, Theo and all, all the guys, they were just such nice guys. A lot of them didn't even know how to ride motorcycles before they got on that show, but now they, you know, they love it. Yeah. And they didn't, you know, a lot of times when you're playing a bad guy in the movies, you take that persona. Rah, rah, rah. They're unbelievably nice guys. You know? I found from working on films for, for many years with the studios, the worse the guy is on screen, the nicer he is in real life. The dicks are the ones that play the nice guys and they're assholes. You're one of the nice guys. Oh, you're so lovely. Yeah. Yeah. You, are, you are lovely. You've always been nice and, and a cool guy every time I've met you. And I want to just thank you. Thank you. We're still in the middle of shooting, so hopefully you'll like me at the end. And we wanted to say goodbye from Girls and Corpses. Girls and Corpses, we love you. We got more shooting to come up. We'll see you. Okay.